Right now, though, very pleased to have with us on the program the president of the Federal Flight Deck Officer Association, uh, Mr. Marcus Flagg. And Marcus, thank you so much, sir, for coming on the program tonight. Hi, Cameron. Uh, good evening to everybody. It's great having you on the show, sir. And, uh, you know, read with great interest uh, a, a story today talking about the Federal Flight Deck Officer Program and how uh, members of the Federal Flight Deck Officer Association want to be able to carry outside of the cockpit. Uh, first of all, let, let's talk a little bit about what the Federal Flight Deck Officer Program is all about, because I have a feeling a lot of Americans may not even know that it exists. You're, you're right at that. It, uh, the Federal Flight Deck Officer Association is a nonprofit, non-compensated trade association representing federal flight deck officers or armed pilots nationwide from every airline. These pilots are the fourth largest federal law enforcement group in the nation, and they're also volunteers with their own time, money, and they help protect the crew, passengers, aircraft, and our country 24-7. You know, the, the process of becoming a federal flight deck officer, um, it, it's, it's, it's difficult. I mean, this isn't really an easy thing uh, for pilots to do. They have to really want it, uh, and it's, it's quite the lengthy process. What does it take to become a federal flight deck officer? Well, first of all, you have to uh, apply online, and then you have to be accepted. And, of course, you have to be an airline pilot on top of that. Uh, they prefer military background and uh, civilian uh, police or a sheriff's association or something uh, like that. But if not, uh, they take you straight in the program, too, uh, with absolutely zero training, and they uh, train to proficiency. It's uh, basically a six-day course out in uh, Artesia, New Mexico. And a completion of that, uh, you are uh, deputized a federal flight deck officer, which you are a federal law enforcement officer. All right, and so who says right now, who sets the policy for uh, what the federal flight deck officers uh, can, can do um, as far as carrying their firearms? Well, that goes back to the original law, uh, which is the Armed Pilots Against uh, Terrorism Act, a PADA, back in uh, 2002. The cargo pilots were added in uh, 2003, and the law states that uh, we're very specific in what we can and can't do. Now, the TSA and the Federal Air Marshals have come up with uh, their ideas with the SOP and what we can and can't do also with that. But what we're asking Congress is for two things, expanded carriage and an increase in the FFDO program budget. The current TSA FFDO firearm transport carriage protocols increase the risk to the public and the FFDOs. And by adopting accepted law enforcement officer firearm protocols, i.e. carriage on the person, mm -hmm. and in the case of FFDOs, concealed, mitigates that risk. And by mitigating that risk, FFDOs are in a better position to protect the flying public and the national infrastructure. We're not trying to expand our jurisdiction, but to expand our authority to carry to and from work concealed on the person. Our jurisdiction is still the cockpit. And the TSA-approved working group concluded that 7 to 12 hours of additional training would be required for expanded carriage once laws changed. Now, when you look at uh, the budget, the TSA budget is over $900 million. Yeah. The current FFDO budget is $22 million and has not changed since 2003. But the FFDO program has grown 100-fold since then. But currently... The TSA has capped the FFDO program, thus turning away thousands of volunteer pilots. You can apply, but now that system's turned off because they don't have enough money. And wow. when you look at the average cost per flight for an FFDO, it's $15. The average cost per flight for two federal air marshals is $6,600. So by comparing the two, the same expenditure allows 440 FFDO flights to be covered at the same cost for one fan flight. The wow. FFDO program is the most cost-effective security program to date. And what we're asking for Congress on the budget is an increase or doubling of the current FFDO budget to allow more pilots to participate in this viable program, therefore increasing the amount of flights protected nationwide. So that's the key things that, that we're looking for right there. Okay. Uh, now, what do you think the, uh, the, the chances are, Marcus, that uh, Congress is going to hear what the F FDOs are saying? I think when they start looking at the budget cuts and everything else, again, we are the most cost-effective security measure. We're a proven commodity. This has been going on now for uh, eight years, and uh, we've done a fantastic job. So I think it's time to expand this program, add more money to it, and do what's the proper thing to do, which is a safe and secure and that's standard law enforcement practice of keeping the weapon 
on the person. That way you don't lose it. It's like a cell phone. You just carry it with you all the time, and you know it's there. And when you start doing that, now you are truly the federal officer in the back of the airplane or in the front of the airplane because no matter what, we're going to protect the cockpit. That is our sole mission. You know, Marcus, this has been uh, absolutely fascinating talking with you uh, about this. And, again, it's, 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 it's an issue that, you know, if, if you fly uh, on a even semi-regular basis, you are impacted by this issue. But, again, so many Americans, I think, are, are unaware of this program uh, that, as you say, really has a drop in the bucket of the TSA's overall budget. I'm kind of shocked. I mean, I've lived uh, in the D.C. area since 2004. I kind of figured that budgets for programs just went up automatically. The fact that you all have not had an increase uh, in the funding for the FFDO program since you said 2003? That's correct. And it's very shocking that we have not had an increase with any kind of a budget. But we are the quiet professionals. And you don't see us, and we don't want to be known. We are invisible. We just go about and do our things, and that's the whole deterrence of the uh, armed pilot program. It's you don't know who's armed. Absolutely right. Well, listen, Marcus, thank you again for your time, sir. Uh, we will continue to cover this story and would love to have you back whenever uh, events warrant. I appreciate it. And thank you very much. And uh, we need everybody's help and support to tell your congressmen and senators that you support the FFDO program. Help us improve the most cost-effective security measure so we can make the skies even safer. Thank you, and good night, everybody. All right. Thank you, sir. Marcus Flagg for the uh, Federal Flight Deck Officer Association. Join us here tonight on CAM and Company.